today we're going to be talking about embalming fluid and how much embalming fluid an average person takes. Okay, let's do it. Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Is Trish is dying to know. I am dying to know. Hi Trace, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm very well. I'm getting warm under these lights actually, to be yes. to be totally truthful. Yes, yeah. you've my, got your cool t-shirt My on. pleather jacket and my cool t-shirt. We've got the memo. Somebody yeah. decided not to promote our channel, but we're not going to mention names, Tracy. Uh, yeah. Anywho, um, it got hot today. That's how I got the summer dress it out. It did get hot today. It's probably been on a million videos this dress and this jacket because it's my go-to first summer thing I pull out the wardrobe when it got hot. And oh my God, was running this morning hot? Yeah, it was hot. Ugh. Anyhow, enough about that. Yes, let's get on. Embalming. Embalming. Fluid. How much embalming fluid does the average person take? Now, this question came from Marilyn and Chris. Okay. They both asked around the same time the same thing, so a video must have sparked that in people. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Well, Do tell. I, uh, uh, yeah, I've written it down. I've, the reason I've written it down is because I want to give you, because uh, we work in litres here. But so you want to give the imperial version as well? Yes, so we'll do okay, the imperials cool. as well so people can get that as well. For so our international friends. For our international friends out there, hello. So basically... The amount of embalming uh, fluid, um, it varies a lot. Mm -hmm. It depends. Depends on what? It depends on several factors, including the body weight, you know, because that's a big one, you know, level of decomposition, you know, that's always a, a, another one of, you know, how much fluid we need, how strong the fluid has to be and all that are stuff. There, are there telltale signs that you can draw a line in the sand and say this is level one, this is level two, this is level three, and therefore yeah. I need this, this or this? Yeah, and another factor is the professional judgment of an right. embalmer. You okay. know, of their, you know uh, they can look and go, uh, yeah, we're going to need about this. Oh, we'll mix this much, but I'm possibly going to have to do another tank of this because I think, you know, this. So, you know, there could be. So that, that's a big factor as well, you okay. know, that, um, cool. you know, the judgment of um, we do. But, um, but generally, guidelines, of a normal average adult, it's approximately 7.6 to 11.4 litres of fluid. That's a lot. It How is. much does your tank hold? So I'll just turn that into gallons. So oh. it's two to three gallons. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. My tank holds 12 litres. Right. How many litres was it? 7.6 to 11.4 okay. litres. So almost a tank. Yeah, I nearly use a tank of fluid nearly on most of my embalms, yeah. uh, average embalms. Right. But then if I've got a bigger person, two tanks. Right. You know, could you know, depends on, again, factors, size, weight, uh, edemous bodies, you know, the, all the different factors is how decomposed, or oh, we've got full of edema, is the trauma, is it an autopsy case? Because you lose a lot of fluid with an autopsy Why? case. Why? It leaks out. Because it just floods out of ah. the open, severed hmm. uh, arteries and veins Makes and capillaries. Sense. So as you're pumping in, like say you're pumping in through the artery up here, you're pumping into the arm and you're pumping, but the blood's being pushed, so you're massaging the blood, but then you, the fluid's just coming out yeah, yeah, as yeah, well yeah. because yeah. There's, there's a big gaping there's hole. There's just holes, and the same yeah. as when you do the femorals, and it just fills the cavity, you know, you've got that empty cavity. So when you're doing an uh, autopsy and balm and the cavity's constantly filling with fluid, we use the... Um, you know, the um, trocar with the mesh on mm -hmm. the bottom, the one where we have to just constantly, because if we leave that fluid just pulling there, the fumes fill oh, the room okay. too much. Yeah. It's really, you're exposed highly to embalming chemical because normally it's in an enclosed yeah. body. Yeah. So we have to stop and clear that fluid out through the trocar, through that mesh once Do you reuse it? In. No, no, it okay. just gets, goes into the trocar and, okay. and gets away. Rid of, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Interesting. So it's, um, so it's basically that much, 7.6 to 11.4, two to three gallons of fluid again. So now you it, know. Is, it is a fair amount. And when we do a TP, so a temporary preserve, you know, the ones where we're just preserving for a day or two weeks or something like that, and maybe it's only used four litres, you right. know, because we don't want to flood the body. We just right. want to, you know, just give that Get initial, rid of the blood. Yeah, just initial, uh, like 
light embalm basically mm-hmm. it's just a nice light so we might even use less on a tp which is a temporary preserve which i know it's all temporary preserving but we it's just mm. the way we see it to do that so raises a question don't know if you know the answer though how much blood comes out oh that varies as well you know that's a big thing sometimes you can't clear the blood that well you know, because of uh, clots, right. you know, sometimes when you're massaging the body, uh, when you're massaging, you see you're doing your carotid and you're draining from the jugular, so you're pushing all the blood in everything, and sometimes there's just nothing coming out of there, and you're like, oh, there's a blockage somewhere, and so you've got forceps down the jugular, you've got big forceps, so you keep like nipping Giggling. the floor and moving them to try and bring the clots up, yeah. and then you will bring a clot up, and the big piece of clot will come out, which is really large and you go okay and then the blood will start flooding out again and then it'll stop again so i didn't know that yeah so sometimes and then sometimes you just hardly get anything so there's clots happening all over so there's blockages everywhere. so then what do you do so that's when you've got to do your six point okay. embalm so right. you and make sure you can try and clear, clear and you'll everything. open you know then you'll open the um uh veins because you normally just drain from the jugular but you might want to open the vein uh, that corresponds with the femoral if you've got the femoral artery up and you might want to open the uh, mm-hmm. other jugular at the other side and also you when you're doing your cavity aspirate and you're doing the heart tap mm-hmm. so you're taking the blood from the heart and draining it that way mm-hmm. too so there's a lot of uh, work goes into if you've got no drainage and, and that's when the body tends to turn grey because we haven't had enough drainage. So we've got all that bilirubin still in the body. We've still got a lot of blood in. And when people turn that grey colour, the drainage has not been really Is that the mix well. of the embalming fluid and the bilirubin? In the blood, right. yeah. Okay. So you get that grey. You know when yep. people say, oh, they look really grey? Mm-hmm. Um, one, it's either too strong a chemical, which can go grey, or the um, clearing of the blood just wasn't good. The drainage was really bad. And it's an embalmer's nightmare, they'll tell you. The drainage, if it's not good, we've got, oh, so there's a lot of work to try yeah. and get that drainage. So you clear it and you get that nice colour. Mm. Otherwise, you tend to get that grain, which is, you know, basically you'll cosmetise over a bit of the grain. But um, it's not because the embalm has done a really bad job. It's just sometimes the drainage is really poor. Yeah. And as much work as we do and try and clear it, it's sometimes impossible. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks so yeah, that. so like I say, it varies, but that's the average. Hello the to average. all our viewers in the States. Yes, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Trace. Yes, Thanks, guys. Thanks Thank for joining you. us today. Yes. Um, a big shout out to our friend Michael. Oh, hi, Michael. I wanted Michael. to say hello to Michael. Michael's not well, and he watches our videos, yeah, and he comments time. all the comments. He comments all the time. And we just wanted to say we're sending love and we hope you're doing okay today. Yeah. And, and and actually it's good because Michael always asks, asks, asks us about embalming. Asks it about embalming and how much fluid because Michael says he's very tall. Ah. And, you know, so it's kind of, color, you know, this should answer your question, Michael, because it does, you know, like I say, average... Uh, two to three gallons or 7.6 to 11.4 uh, litres. Uh, and somebody that's taller will use a little bit more. But it know. can definitely be yeah. embalmed. But definitely be embalmed. Yeah. doesn't matter how tall, short, you know, large, small, whatever. Can, we can still embalm and the flu will be less or more. And that's where the skill of the embalmer comes yeah, into it. And I know right. people might think that's insensitive that we're talking like that to Michael, but Michael asks the question. So it's yeah, better to does. answer, honestly... Yeah, he hmm. does. And, yeah, so, you know, we do try and answer him. Michael has uh, asked it a few times, so hopefully that will, you know, put your mind at ease because you, you're always worried that the embalmer is going to take care of you. And I'm sure, and let's hope it's not for a very long time, <laughs> very Definitely. long time. Uh, but I'm sure you'll be well cared for uh, eventually, but not yet. We don't want that happen yet. So Take care, lovely. But we'll speak to you again in a few years' time, Michael. Don't worry about it. Take care. See you guys. Bye. Bye.